Um, so we just need to identify a couple of things before we start. Um, are you a homeowner or do you rent? I own. You own? Okay. Um, and the type of structure, is it single family detached, a multi-unit townhome, um, a condo, or an apartment? Single family detached. And do you know an approximate date that you moved in? Could be just the year. 1994. Okay. Um, have you always lived in Berrien County? No. Okay. Um, so tell me how you ended up living here in Berrien County. Um, my mother and grandmother lived here. And when we moved away my senior year in high school, we, I moved back to live with my grandmother in 1990, in 1989 okay. to go to college at Valdosta State. Okay. All right. And I moved in with her. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so I, too, came from, like, a very small town, and I chose to live in Berrien, Berrien County because it is very small. Um, and I do, too, own my own home. So could you tell me about the type of home that you live in, um, who you live with, and that kind of stuff? I live in a house that was built originally in the early 1960s. Um, my grandmother and grandfather built the house, so we live, we live in their house. I live there with my husband and our 900 pets, it feels like. <laughs> um, it's in an established neighborhood. Okay near where I work, so very nice. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay. So have you currently invested in any kind of solar technologies, either on the rooftop of your home, on your property, as part of your business, or as a part of your program through your utility service? We have not. We have not done any of those things. Okay. Um, and can you tell me... Um, Tell me why you do not have rooftop solar. Did you make that decision or was it made for you? Um, I don't know that we've ever really made a, any kind of decision about it at all. It has never been presented to us as a possibility. Okay. But it is absolutely something my husband would love. So if it's an opportunity that your husband or even you yourself would like, um, so if it was available, um, why would you want it? Um, we're very concerned um, about the environment, and we are concerned about climate change, and my husband most definitely is concerned about the effects of what humans are doing to the planet, and he tries to make sure that he uses very few single-use plastics. He, you know, he wants to make sure that we're not making extra trips places for no reason he's very concerned about what we're doing and how we're doing it okay so if you um did have that option to put it on your rooftop would you put it would you use it yes or no we probably would use it it depends on the cost okay I mean, i'm a teacher and he's an x-ray tech so <laughs> i don't as long as it is not cost prohibitive and we could see in the long run that it would benefit us most definitely okay I absolutely see that we would use something like that. Okay, so I'd like to talk just a little bit about rooftop solar adoption in general. Okay. Um, here's a map of the United States and a pin for you. Okay. Um, where do you think people adopt or invest in most in the most um, like solar technologies? And could you draw that on the map? You can just circle areas, one area. So, what area is more likely to invest, or yes. what states, or I'm yes, just, or like what states, area, wherever you think they are more, more likely to invest? Okay. So, you circle some kind of the um, west coast and southern part of the United States. Like, what makes those communities different from people here in Berrien County? Like, what kind of people live in those communities? Um, on the west coast and Nevada and Arizona and New Mexico, they tend to be more power leaning, um, new technology leaning groups. Those are the groups that, you know, they want the electric cars, they want the, the solar charge stations, they want those kind of things. And I think that we should, as Georgia, Floridians, Alabamas, you know, Mississippi, Louisiana, Texas, we have that commodity 
all the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, this year alone, it feels like we've had 10,000 days of summer, and it's, you know, October, and it's hot still. <laughs> so we have, that, we have that readily available resource. I mm -hmm. mean, there's not anything blocking our chances to, to recoup power every day, all day. Right. So now that we've kind of identified what specific parts of the United States, now I want to talk about like specific areas in Georgia. Okay. Um, and you can, again, circle areas that you think is more, more likely to adopt solar energies. Okay. So you circled like the metro Atlanta, North Georgia area. Um, what makes that community different from us here in South Georgia? And what kind of people live in those communities? Um, uh, many of the housing developments up there have the chance now that the Atlanta area metropolitan area which is everywhere from Atlanta to Chattanooga has the uh, the chance to because they're building so many new houses they have the opportunity to put these green resources in before they even finish construction of the home and I think that if people see that as an option and see that as their choice they're more likely to be accepting of it in the, pretty much in the metro area I think if we start doing it down here, we would have as many people being acceptable, accepting of it as they do, especially if it's going to cut your utility bills. Right. Okay, and that, that's a good point. I haven't actually even thought of it that way or heard it mentioned, but that's very true. You know, an unfinished home, you're not really going to add on to it because it's not really going to really change much. But if it's already the there, yeah. then, you know. Um, so what about most of your close friends here in Georgia? Do you know if they have solar power or energy technologies? I know my friend who lives in Rock Mart has solar panels okay. at his house. But he's also um, a Georgia Tech graduate, so that was going to be his, gotcha. his little niche anyway. Okay. But he's the only one I think I, I know of that has any kind of solar power. Okay. Um, and why do you think that he has it? I mean, other than him being a Georgia Tech graduate, I think that he sees the 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 ability to offset the original cost by the savings that he and his wife and kids get from the solar panels. Okay. I mean, their electric bill isn't nearly as high because they have their own source of power. Okay. All right, um, so now there's a section about um, your food choices. So now, if you don't mind, um, I'm going to ask you a few questions regarding the role of food in your day-to-day -day life. Um, so if you don't mind, um, tell me about your regular day with food. What do you, your meals and your snacks typically look like? Um, my husband and I are vegan vegetarian, so our typical snacks are not like most of the people around here. Um, we do have to go out of town to buy groceries most often. And we try to we try to make one trip or two trips so that we're not having to constantly go back and forth. Okay. But the food choices in our area are limited. So if you had to choose one meal that you would consider like your go to meal, what would it be and why? Go to meal. Um, maybe your favorite thing? I make a really good quinoa taco casserole. Okay. And why? Why is that why your go-to meal? It's easy. It's filling. Um, we can usually get most of the ingredients locally and not have to worry about it too hard. Okay. So it's one of those things I can get home at 530, throw together, and we've got food. Right. So it's easy. It's filling. It's, most ingredients you can buy locally, and it's not time-consuming. Not time-consuming. Okay. All right. Um, how often do you cook your own meals? Um, like, how, how many times out of the week do you cook a meal? Um, five to seven. Okay. That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you the only person that makes the decision about the food you purchase in your household? Oh, absolutely not. No, my husband and I make a grocery <laughs> list together. Okay. Do y'all both purchase the food together, prepare the meals together? I do all the cooking okay. and the cleaning. That's a whole other research <laughs> article. Um, but we do usually 
purchase them together. We okay. go together. So you do all the cooking. I do all the cooking. <laughs> so what are some things that you consider when making your food choices? I know you've talked about y'all being vegan and vegetarian and having to go out of town. Um, but what are some factors that go into your food choices? I will be honest because I'm a teacher. Easy mm -hmm. comes into into play. If it's something I can put in the crock pot, or if it's something I can, you know, throw together in 20 or 30 minutes, that's uh, super important to me because uh, I don't want to spend an hour and a half making a culinary <laughs> delight for us to eat in 15 minutes. Right. Okay. Um, how often do you purchase food for your household? Um, like how many times a week or a month do y'all go to the grocery store? We do um, big grocery shopping twice a month, and then we do replacements of, like, lettuces and vegetables and that kind of thing um, every week. Okay. So weekly for more fresh items? Yep. Okay. All right, so paint this picture for me. Let's say you were um, taking a trip to purchase food. Um, what does your trip around the grocery store look like? Where do you start? Where do you finish? Is there a certain order you go in? Um, what does that look like? Um, we typically start in the vegetable fruit section. Okay. And then grains and, not, they're not grains, but what are they? Legumes. Okay. There we go. I'm like, what are those things called? <laughs> um, so grains, beans, condiments. Um, we like the snack aisle, especially at Whole Foods because there's all kinds of vegan stuff. Good stuff. Yes, I mean, vegan jerky, so that's <laughs> nice. Um, then the dairy section for the vegan dairy, vegan yogurt, vegan cheese, you know, vegan butter sticks. <laughs> um, and then probably the last aisle is like, you know, the usual things like the peanut butter and the okay. that kind of stuff pantry goods the pantry stuff yeah absolutely <laughs> okay um when it comes to feeding you and your family what are some challenges you face um kind of for example like with me I have a very busy schedule so and being gone a lot I don't always get to cook as much as I would like or make those nice delicious meals um so what are some of the challenges you face well, our biggest challenge is there's no such thing as zipping through fast food, except for Burger King now, who has the Impossible Whopper. Thank you, Burger King. Um, so other than that, it's I have to cook. There's not a, I don't feel like cooking tonight. Well, then we have to eat cereal. I mean, so it's, and somehow he doesn't find that a viable option. So it's, you know, it's that there's no quick out if I want to get one. There's no throw a pizza in the oven and be done. It's, it's something's got to be prepared. Got to be prepared. Okay. 